The Walt Disney Animation Studios is universally known for its 93-year reign in the production of animated films and shorts. While established in the world of pop culture, the studio is known for bringing joy and memories into the hearts of millions around the world. But, what if Disney didn't used to be so cheerful? In the year of 1941, animators from the Walt Disney Animation Studios took a stand against the unfair treatment they received on the job by assembling a strike that lasted a total of five weeks. It wreaked havoc on one of the largest and most well-known animation studios present in the era, and caused so much change in the animation industry that it is still recognized as being the civil war of animation today. By the late 1930s, the Walt Disney Animation Studio was seen in the animation community as massive competition, with pirate success in multiple cartoon shorts and the 1937 film Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. The company's box office success prompted Walt Disney to begin the expansion of his company and resulted in a studio being constructed in Burbank, California in late 1939. Coincidentally, the Screen Cartoonist Guild was formed in Los Angeles, California about a year prior. The Screen Cartoonist Guild, later renamed the Animation Guild, sought to provide justice to cartoonists who had been unfairly treated as mere secondary workers within their workplace. The Guild followed the increase of labor unions in the 1930s and came to a peak at the end of the Great Depression, as animators felt the need to seek out a more stable income source. Unionization began to spread throughout Hollywood like a wildfire, and most animators earned higher salaries and more equality in the workplace. The same trend carried throughout several other entertainment industries as well, such as in theater, radio, and music industries. Yet despite the increased salaries and improved rights for most entertainment fields, the animators of the famous Walt Disney Animation Studios still remain divided. On top of this, in 1940, the financial state of Walt Disney Animation Studio was in peril after the sudden failures of Pinocchio and Fantasia. Together, the two films resulted in over $15 million in losses. While Disney had originally intended to boast his studio's quality through these films, and these massive losses took him by surprise. In spite of his efforts, Walt was then unable to support his animation team of 1,200 employees and resorted to layoffs. Unbeknownst to the lower-level animators of the studio, these layoffs were occurring in conjunction with unlawful working hours and unequal treatment between the varying employee levels. All employees were pushed to work six-day weeks with mandatory work on Saturdays, regardless of salary. The gap between the highest and lowest paid worker was as much as $288, about $4,735 in 2016. You know, at the studio at Walt Disney's at the time, we had some people who were making like um, $500 a month. Now, there were some artists that could actually afford servants and could actually afford a maid and a chauffeur. And then there were other people making $12 a week and, and were barely subsisting. Top level writers and animators, who were primarily men, were treated with lavish restaurants, offices, and a gymnasium present on studio grounds. Women, however, worked in the ink and paint department and were given the lowest respect in the mundane job of coloring each drawing frame by frame. Walt was blissfully unaware of any growing tensions within his studio and instead saw his employees as a giant family. However, as animators began to take notice of these mistreatments and lack of unionization, Many of the top employees joined the Screen Cartoonist Guild in secret, hoping to take a stand against Walt himself. Yet, as more animators continued to secretly participate in this guild, they eventually decided to try and convince Walt Disney to allow their unionization. However, Disney felt personally betrayed by this attempt to unionize, and he quickly grew aware of the extent of discontent within his workforce. In response to this request, he threatened to fire his workers, titling them communists. Among those in the guild were Art Babbitt, one of the studio's highest paid animators. Despite Walt Disney's daunting words, Babbitt, as well as 16 others, persisted to take a stand against unequal rights and were eventually fired. Firing Babbitt caused the tension between Walt Disney and his animators to finally overstrain. In retaliation to Babbitt's dismissal, as well as the previous injustices from Walt Disney, an approximate 300 employees left to assemble their strike. On May 29, 1941, 
Just one day after Babbitt's layoff, these 300 protesters gathered outside of Walt Disney Studios to take a stand against their unjust boss. As Walt Disney approached his studio that day, he was forced to slowly drive through a sea of angry protesters, several of which held homemade signs declaring, Disney unfair, or I'd rather be a dog than a scab. While some animators stood quietly during the protest, others instead decided to march outside of Walt Disney's studio, equipped with a guillotine resting on their shoulders. So a lot of the artists you know, walked out on principle that they wanted to create a, 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 level, of, a, which was a, a level set of wages and a level playing field for everybody. It kind of showed the value of, of bad publicity. So to see their artists you know, complaining, that also showed the uh, you know, the Disney company. While the strike was being held, Little production was occurring within the studio as a large portion of the animation staff had suddenly abandoned their work to join the picketers, when especially well-known film Dumbo was in production during this time. Once animators had walked away from their stations, only the rough animation of Dumbo had been finished, moving it incomplete into the fall of 1941. The strikers even ended up influencing the clown characters in the film. In the movie, they can be seen agreeing to hit the big boss for a raise. The first people to put me to smear me and put me on the unfair list were all of the commie front organizations. I can't remember them all, they've changed so often, but one that's clear in my mind is the League of Women Voters, the People's World, the Daily Worker, and uh, the PM Magazine in New York. They smeared me, nobody came near. As outside organizations such as these also began taking a stand in publicly supporting Disney animators, Walt took a trip to South America in order to avoid the further chaos occurring at his studio, leaving his brother Roy to deal with the strike. By the time he had returned, the strike had dwindled down, but tension and anger towards Walt was high. Finally, after the five-week strike had ended and only a few animators remained at the studio in the months that followed, Walt signed off the studio as a union shop in September 1941. Finances and stock prices had continued to decline, and he was fearful that the worsening state would ruin his career and success. After the signing, animators were awarded with the equality and fairness they deserved, after tirelessly taking a stand for what they believed in. 40-hour work weeks were established, and salaries for both low- and high-level animators doubled. However, the studio still lacked the former family-like bond it had prior to the strike, and tension between Walt and even the top animators was clear in the workplace. Union supporters were often shunned and the first to be laid off when staff cuts were requested. Walt claimed that the studio got rid of the chip on the shoulder boys and the world owes me a living lads. However, as the year came to a close, animators still continued to take a stand by quitting, regardless of the recent salary raises. The Disney animators strike paved the way for animators and soon, 90% of Hollywood consisted of unions. Walt, growing in stress and paranoia, chose to finally ignore the growth of union supporters within his studios and began focusing his energy on studio production instead. Walt Disney Animation Studios began to thrive as film production accelerated and both financial and box office successes came its way. In the early 1950s, Disney saw successes in films such as Cinderella, Alice in Wonderland, and Peter Pan, allowing animators to work at their fullest potential and received the pay that they deserved. Over the next few decades, the Walt Disney Animation Studios expanded to not only animation, but live action films, television series, and theme parks. In 2015, the Walt Disney Company boasted its 166,000 employee count and its record for having the highest number of on-site employees in the world. All employees receive a living wage of $15 and both men and women are provided with equal opportunities throughout the studio. We have like one of the highest standards of living. It's like we have a very good health plan. We have very good retirement benefits. Um, uh, you know, a standardized wage. All these kind of things you you know you didn't have before the union. Disney is a towering empire in the world of animation and film, and continues to dominate the entertainment industry as one of the most cherished and beloved companies in the world. The next time your favorite Disney film premieres or airs on television, stop and think about the animators behind the magic, especially the hundreds over 75 years ago that transformed both the studio and workforce forever.